Yes. Um, the question is how. Um, and there's sort of a scale, I think, to look at. Um, so um, assuming that Brexit will happen, and everybody is assuming that, then um, it's a question of how close the UK stays. Um, let's say that it stays very close. Um, people will talk about a Norway-style model. Um, Norway pays into various programs, um, and they're an associate of the big EU research framework program, Horizon 2020, soon to be Framework Program 9. Um, so they obviously do, and, and, and that's obviously possible for them. But then let's look and go all the way to the other end of the scale. Let's assume a sort of worst case scenario um, where the UK is really quite far away from the EU um, across the board. Um, you have countries around the world who are associate members of Horizon 2020, for example. So Israel um, really value their involvement. Switzerland also, although it's a little bit of a special case, they do value their involvement. So it's certainly possible. And the UK government has said that they would like to participate in at least Horizon. Um, that's, that's quite an easy, uh, it's quite an easy priority to justify because the UK is a major beneficiary. Um, the question is also then other research programs. Um, so we're here today for Interreg, um, and uh, Interreg programs do sometimes contain an element of uh, research collaboration. Um, and the question is how would the UK maybe involve themselves there? Um, and there is definitely the possibility to do so. Um, again, Norway, um, albeit attached to their sort of um, membership of the, the EU single market, they do pay in, as it were, to those kind of projects. Um, and that's certainly something of interest um, for the UK government. Um, we have been talking with them as the East of England office, um, East of England European Partnership, have been talking with UK government about potentially buying into select parts of the interreg program at whatever program level. Um, and that is of interest to them. That's on their priority sheets. They have told us that. Um, the question now is to, to, to prove the value for money. Um, which can be done. It's, it's more difficult than with Horizon, but you can do it um, with interreg programs. Um, and um, hopefully that would then um, provide a kind of a model, successful model for, for future collaboration. And, and if we started off the UK outside the EU like that, maybe then they would integrate more slowly um, towards um, funding integration, perhaps not single market integration, but funding integration. So um, uh, elongated, yes, but definitely a yes. The UK is not the only European country that has big international aspirations. Um, Brexit might have catalyzed those aspirations in the UK, but you look across Europe and everybody wants to, to do business outside of Europe. Of course they do. Um, one model which uh, I've been looking at with colleagues in the east of England um, is cooperation specifically with a particular region of China, um, the Jiangsu region. Um, why? Because it's a region the size of Germany, population-wise. Um, growth rate of over 7% GDP, um, you know, leading region within China. And doing business there, in the wider sense of doing business, is not just about straightforward exports and imports. It's also about marrying up the demands in that region, high-tech uh, medical applications, for example, with the supply of that high-tech knowledge and those products and services that, in this case, County Council of Essex has in the East of England. But there's absolutely no reason why other areas of the EU who are also developing really, really cutting edge, innovative, in this case, medical applications, such as in Stockholm, um, could also you know, find joy in somewhere like uh, Jiangsu in, in China. Um, and so maybe there's a potential for that model that some of our colleagues in the East of England have already had for over the last 30 years, have had this relationship with that part of China there might be the possibility to expand that out to include other European partners that the East of England likes to work with that have got similar types of approaches to their innovation and um, they, they, they are also looking to um, uh, sell their expertise and their services expertise and their high-tech products. So not just talking products, but goods and services together um, to China, but maybe around the world. But China, maybe that's a good start. It's a very big country with a huge demand, so maybe that's a, a good start.